Casey LaPierre here. Uh, I was on Facebook uh, last week and I was in one of the, the various groups and the group that I was in uh, had a post on a new tool or a relatively new tool, a, a pair of dividers that was used to find uh, the center of rotation or the axis on the solar aspect of the foot. And as the comments developed, uh, I had put a comment in uh, explaining how we find the access uh, and it was just simply a comment saying that I use what we call palpation all right we palpate the surface of the frog along its sagittal line uh, identifying how the tissue is developed in other words after the last 18 years of doing dissections and teaching uh, we, we are pretty confident in our understanding of the morphology of the horn of the frog what we have to understand is that the conformation of the frog uh, takes its conformation from the digital cushion and the foundation for the digital cushion is responsible for the delivery of stimulus to the dermis which produces that epidermis or the horn in the frog. So the conformation of the foundation which is for the apex which is our, our uh, the apex of the frog is going to be P3 then at the point of uh, the insertion of the deep flexor tendon, which we call the pointer, so my big fingers aren't in the way here. At the insertion of the deep flexor tendon, uh, which is identified as Duckett's dot on the frog, we'll see an anomaly or a change in the development of the horn itself along that sagittal line. As we progress, as we move caudal or palmar in the foot along that line we can we go from uh, we're following the deep flexor tendon which runs across the navicular bone and at the point where the impar ligament of the navicular bone inserts into P3 the stimulus on the digital cushion is altered just like the insertion of the deep flexor tendon as a result the morphology of the tissue or the development of the tissue in the digital cushion and ultimately the dermis which produces the horn will also be different to each side of that point. So to each side of the insertion of the, the impart ligament we find that we see a deviation in the frog. If I can hold this up to the light there you can see along that sagittal line the horn has developed differently and it's become very clear to us that if we palpate along that sagittal line we can feel for these anomalies and identify our access of the joint okay we can also identify Duckett's dot or the insertion of the deep flexor tendon which is directly distal to the extensor process uh, on P3 so these things have, have just come about because We've been uh, doing dissections now for almost 20 years. We do dissections every month. In fact, I've got some cadavers here that uh, come out of my freezer because I keep a pretty good stock of cadavers that I refresh on a regular basis. Um, but I want to show you on some of these freeze-dried hooves first what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. This one was an interesting one. This was actually sent to me back in 2002. Uh, by Allie Hayes of uh, Allie does the freeze dried models and she sent them to us she sent it to several several different trimmers uh, asking us to trim half the foot uh, with our method and the other half to leave it leave it alone she created models for uh, for the American Farriers Association roundtable at the conference in 2002 we sent we were sent a normal foot in what was considered to be a pathology. Now, on the, on the uh, comments, one thing that uh, was concerned, that they were concerned with, was that when on very hard feet, can we feel it on hard feet? It doesn't matter if it's a hard foot, it doesn't matter if it's a trimmed, trimmed frog, it doesn't matter if it's soft, because we're palpating with a very, very soft feel along that sagittal line, and we can come to where we feel that deviation, which is our access. Okay, so you can see on this one, there's quite a quite a deviation in the sagittal line or the 
topography of the frog. Uh, this horse obviously was a foundered horse. This is the one that she sent and requested that we trim half of the foot. Now the way I located that access was I felt that deviation on the frog. That's how I marked it up. The same goes for P3 because this became part of the discussion. Can we see the morphology of the tissue for P3? Absolutely. Whether it's a, a, a very hard foot or a, a very soft foot, whether it's overgrown, you can actually see the change in the tissue that identifies the distal border of P3. So that was that one. Uh, you can see in the cross sections on here uh, where the where the the changes occur. Okay, and if we we palpate, we can find that access just as readily on this foot. And again, duck and start access. It's it's very easy to see. No matter if it's an extremely overgrown foot, because again, we can see where the change is, and we can palpate for that, and it identifies our access pretty clearly. So let's take a look at some of these cadavers. Um, so when, I, when I'm teaching in my class, which like I said, we've been teaching since uh, 99, we, we teach the traditional mapping methods. Uh, there's mapping methods out there, tons of them, um, using the widest part of the viable soul. It's called live soul in a lot of schools. The viable soul, using the widest part of the viable soul, and a line that's transverse, our sagittal. Well, that we do use, and we do use, uh, you know, indicators that we're wrong, if we're wrong or not. For instance, if, if our transverse line is identified palmar to the ends of the actual bars, obviously we can't be correct because the foundation for <clears throat> the foundation for the frog stay or a uh behind the widest part of P3 is actually cartilage. So that's, you know, we can't be correct in our assessment of the axis or the center of rotation uh, if our transverse line is palmar to the ends of the bars. Okay, so we can see here, when I, you can actually look across this, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but you can look across it and you can actually see a small dip uh, which is right at our access, and we can find Duckett's dot, which translates. Um, so it really doesn't matter uh, whether you're dealing with a hard foot or a soft foot. Uh, you can see here, I can come right to it. If I just, not even looking at it, I can feel it. It's right there as my access, okay, right at the end of my bars. Uh, so, so that doesn't change very much. We do have change in the surface, in the horn of the frog, but its confirmation in the morphology of the tissue uh, is pretty pretty uh, dependable and can be used. That's about it. That's about it. It's really quite simple. Uh, it takes some practice, and we do that in our in our in our five day courses. We teach. Uh, you know, we teach uh, to anybody that's interested in learning about it. And uh, it's a uh, shameless pitch here. Um, that information is in my new book. Laminitis, okay, founder and equine digital osteoarthritis. So, if you're interested um, in learning more about uh, the studies that I've done, uh, the histological studies that I've done, and the development of our internal arch apparatus, and anatomy, and the histological studies that we did to determine what we were talking about here when it comes to equine digital osteoarthritis the anatomy of our angular cartilages and so forth. Um, I invite you to uh, review my book. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot.